In articulatory phonetics, the place of articulation of a consonant is the point of contact where an obstruction occurs in the vocal tract between an articulatory gesture, an active articulator, and a passive location. Along with the manner of articulation and the phonation, this gives the consonant its distinctive sound. The terminology in this article has been developed to precisely describe all the consonants in all the world's spoken languages. No known language distinguishes all of the places described here, so less precision is needed to distinguish the sounds of a particular language. Overview The human voice produces sounds in the following manner air pressure from the lungs creates a steady flow of air through the trachea, larynx, and pharynx. The vocal folds in the larynx vibrate, creating fluctuations in air pressure that are known as sound waves. Resonances in the vocal tract modify these waves according to the position and shape of the lips, jaw, tongue, soft palate, and other speech organs, creating formant regions and thus different qualities of sonorant sound. Mouth and nose openings radiate the sound waves into the environment. The larynx the larynx or voice box is a cylindrical framework of cartilage that serves to anchor the vocal folds. When the muscles of the vocal folds contract, the airflow from the lungs is impeded until the vocal folds are forced apart again by the increasing air pressure from the lungs. This process continues in a periodic cycle that is felt as a vibration. In singing, the vibration frequency of the vocal folds determines the pitch of the sound produced. Voiced phonemes such as the pure vowels are, by definition, distinguished by the buzzing sound of this periodic oscillation of the vocal cords. The lips of the mouth can be used in a similar way to create a similar sound, as any toddler or trumpeter can demonstrate. A rubber balloon, inflated but not tied off and stretched tightly across the neck produces a squeak or buzz, depending on the tension across the neck and the level of pressure inside the balloon. Similar actions with similar results, occur when the vocal cords are contracted or relaxed across the larynx. Place of articulation The passive place of articulation is the place on the more stationary part of the vocal tract where the articulation occurs. It can be anywhere from the lips, upper teeth, gums, or roof of the mouth to the back of the throat. Although it is a continuum, there are several contrastive areas such that languages may distinguish consonants by articulating them in different areas but few languages will contrast two sounds within the same area unless there is some other feature which contrasts as well. The following areas are contrastive, the upper lip, the upper teeth either on the edge of the teeth or inner surface, the alveolar ridge, the gum line just behind the teeth, the back of the alveolar ridge, the hard palate on the roof of the mouth, the soft palate further back on the roof of the mouth, the uvula hanging down at the entrance to the throat, the throat itself, also known as the pharynx, the epiglottis at the entrance to the windpipe, above the voice box, these regions are not strictly separated. For instance, in many languages the surface of the tongue contacts a relatively large area from the back of the upper teeth to the alveolar ridge. This is common enough to have received its own name, dentialveolar. Likewise, the alveolar and postalveolar regions merge into each other, as do the heart and soft palate the soft palate and the uvula, and indeed all adjacent regions. Terms like prevelar, postvelar, and upper versus lower pharyngeal may be used to specify more precisely where an articulation takes place. However, although a language may contrast prevelar and postvelar sounds, it will not also contrast them with palatal and uvula sounds, so the contrasts are limited to the number above if not always their exact location. Place of articulation the articulatory gesture of the active place of articulation involves the more mobile part of the vocal tract. This is typically some part of the tongue or lips. The following areas are known to be contrastive, the lower lip, various parts of the front of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the upper front surface of the tongue just behind the tip, called the blade of the tongue, the surface of the tongue under the tip, the body of the tongue, the base also known as root of the tongue in the throat, the epiglottis, the flap at the base of the tongue, the arapiglottic folds at the entrance to the larynx, the glottis, in bilabial consonants both lips move, so the articulatory gesture is bringing together the lips, but by convention the lower lip is said to be active and the upper lip passive. Similarly, 
In lingua labial consonants the tongue contacts the upper lip with the upper lip actively moving down to meet the tongue. Nonetheless, in this gesture the tongue is conventionally said to be active and the lip passive, if for no other reason than the fact that the parts of the mouth below the vocal tract are typically active, and those above the vocal tract typically passive. In dorsal gestures different parts of the body of the tongue contact different parts of the roof of the mouth, but this cannot be independently controlled, so they are all subsumed under the term dorsal. This is unlike coronal gestures involving the front of the tongue, which is more flexible. The epiglottis may be active, contacting the pharynx, or passive, being contacted by the arepiglottal folds. Distinctions made in these laryngeal areas are very difficult to observe and are the subject of ongoing investigation, with several as yet unidentified combinations thought possible. The glottis acts upon itself. There is a sometimes fuzzy line between glottal, arepiglottal, and epiglottal consonants and phonation, which uses these same areas. Unlike the passive articulation, which is a continuum, there are five discrete active articulators, the lip, the flexible front of the tongue, the midlier euro back of the tongue, the root of the tongue together with the epiglottis, and the larynx. These articulators are discrete in that they can act independently of each other, and two or more may work together in what is called co-articulation. The distinction between the various coronal articulations, laminal, apical, and subapical, are however a continuum without clear boundaries. Table of gestures and passive articulators and resulting places of articulation, the following table shows the possible combinations of active and passive articulators. The possible locations where sibilants as well as non-sibilants can occur are indicated in dashed red. For sibilants, there are additional complications involving tongue shape. See the article on sibilants for a chart of possible articulations. A precise vocabulary of compounding the two places of articulation is sometimes seen. However, this is usually reduced to the passive articulation, which is generally sufficient. Thus dorsala uropalatal, dorsala uro-vela, and dorsala uro-uvela are usually just called palatal, vela, and uvela. Where there is ambiguity, additional terms have been invented, so subapicala uropalatal is more commonly called retroflex. Note, additional shades of passive articulation are sometimes specified using pre or post, for example pre-palatal or postfala. These can be useful in the precise description of sounds that are articulated somewhat farther forward or back than a prototypical consonant. For this purpose, the fronted and retracted IPA diacritics can be used. However, none of these additional shades are needed to phonemically distinguish two consonants in a single language. Home organic consonants, consonants that have the same place of articulation, such as the alveolar sound slash n, t, d, s, z, l slash in English, are said to be home organic. Similarly, labial slash p, b, m slash and velar slash k, e, angstrom slash are home organic. A home organic nasal rule, an instance of assimilation, operates in many languages, where a nasal consonant must be homorganic with the following stop. We see this with English intolerable but implausible. Another example is found in Yoruba, where the present tense of bar hide is mba is hiding, while the present of sun sleep is nsun is sleeping. Central and lateral articulation. The tongue contacts the mouth with a surface, which has two dimensions, length and width. So far only points of articulation along its length have been considered. However, articulation varies along its width as well. When the airstream is directed down the center of the tongue, the consonant is said to be central. If, however, it is deflected off to one side, escaping between the side of the tongue and the side teeth, it is said to be lateral. Nonetheless, for simplicity's sake the place of articulation is assumed to be the point along the length of the tongue and the consonant may in addition be said to be central or lateral. That is, a consonant may be lateral alveolar, like English, or lateral palatal, like Castilian Spanish LL. Some indigenous Australian languages contrast dental, alveolar, retroflex, and palatal laterals, and many Native American languages have lateral fricatives and affricates as well. Co-articulation, 
Some languages have consonants with two simultaneous places of articulation, called co-articulation. When these are doubly articulated, the articulators must be independently movable, and therefore there may only be one each from the major categories labial, coronal, dorsal, radical, and laryngeal. The only common doubly articulated consonants are labor eurovelar stops like kp, enb, and less commonly, angstrom im, which are found throughout West and Central Africa. Other combinations are rare. They include labor euro, post, alveolar stops, tpdb nem, found as distinct consonants only in a single language in New Guinea, and a uvular euro epiglottal stop, ki angstrom, found in Somali. More commonly, co-articulation involves secondary articulation of an approximantic nature, in which case both articulations can be similar, such as labialized labial, me or palatalized velar, k squared. This is the case of English, w, which is a velar consonant with secondary labial articulation. Common co-articulations include, labialization, rounding the lips while producing the obstruction, as in, k and English, w. Palatalization, raising the body of the tongue toward the hard palate while producing the obstruction, as in Russian, T E squared and E. Velarization, raising the back of the tongue toward the soft palate, as in the English dark L, L. Pharyngealization, constriction of the throat, such as Arabic emphatic, T E currency. Production of vowels, a vowel is any phoneme in which airflow is impeded only or mostly by the voicing action of the vocal cords. The well-defined fundamental frequency provided by the vocal cords in voiced phonemes is only a convenience, however, not a necessity, since a strictly unvoiced whisper is still quite intelligible. Our interest is therefore most focused on further modulations of and additions to the fundamental tone by other parts of the vocal apparatus determined by the variable dimensions of oral, pharyngeal, and even nasal cavities. Formants, formants are the resonant frequencies of the vocal tract that emphasize particular voice harmonics near and frequency to the resonance, or turbulent non-periodic energy near the formant frequency in the case of whispered speech. The formants tell a listener what vowel is being spoken. See also, manner of articulation, relative articulation, tongue shape. Sibilant, Index of Phonetics Articles, Notes. References, Laidforged, Peter. Madison, Ian. The Sounds of the World's Languages. Oxford, Blackwell. ISBN 0-631-19814-8. External links, Interactive Places and Manners of Articulation.